Sorry, babe, I wasn't listening. I was too busy fixing my flux dispatcher. You see, it wasn't emitting the constants to the storage properly. Yes, as I'm sure you're aware by now, Flux and React use a lot of words that are kind of new to the JavaScript community. So once you get over that kind of initial terrifying, oh my goodness, what are you talking about? Then you wrap your head around what those words mean, and Flux really isn't complicated at all. Just hard to understand when people forget what it's like to have not heard those words and try to communicate it to you. So where our app is so far is we have our component, our to-do list component, and we are pulling all of our to-dos from the store. So next up, let's actually get this to be more dynamic uh, to where when our store changes, it emits a change method and then our component can automatically stay updated as the store changes. That's really easy to do. Um, so let's go ahead and add a create to do method. So create to do, and I'm on my store right here. Uh, actually, I'm not, I'm on my page. Let's go to my store. Go to my store, let's do add a create to do method. And now uh, we probably only need to receive our text. And so then all we're going to do is this dot to do's dot push. We're going to push a new one onto the array and we need the text complete will be false by default. And then we also need an ID. So for now, I'm just going to kind of hack an ID in here and we're just going to go date now, which just prints off a timestamp. If you go over here and say date now, that's just going to always give me a timestamp. So as long as I'm not firing two date nows in the exact same millisecond, I'm fine for this app scenario that I'm doing. So let's also add in the ID. So we have ID, text, and complete. And then all we have to do is emit a change event. Um, and we just have to go this emit change. So on change, someone else can get that event. So now let's just go back to our to do's page. And there's a awesome thing that's in the React component called components will mount. Whenever the component is about to render to the DOM for the very first time, and the first time only, it will fire the component will mount function if it exists. So this is a great place to add event listeners uh, because you only have to do it when it gets rendered and it only happens once. So at this point, we can go to do store on change and let's give it a function, arrow function, so it automatically binds to this. I can go this dot set state to do's and we're basically going to just update our to do's with the to do store get all. So whenever to do store changes, we update our state. Very simple. Add semicolons, which are no longer necessary with our transpilation. Um, so great. That should be working. Here's how we can test that is we can just expose our to do store globally for now equals to do store. So now I can actually access that from the console. I can go to do store dot create to do. Excellent. Test to do showed up. Test to do two showed up. So now our component is dynamically updating whenever the store changes. Uh, our next set step to do is going to be to wire in a dispatcher so any events can come through to the store. So let's go ahead and create a flux dispatcher.